Another type of signal processing or data reduction with dynamic signals uh, occurs when we have a signal that contains information that for uh, whatever reason we know is not part of uh, what we're actually trying to measure. And so we try to remove some of that information uh, and we call that noise. And so this uh, video is about reducing noise. So the first process we're going to talk about is called um, time averaging, and that is a way to take a, a complex, usually stochastic signal, uh, and try to get rid of some of the random variations in that signal. Uh, and the way time averaging works is, let's say at uh, time two, you know, we have a reading that's right here, right? So if we time average over five data points, what we do is we say at time two, I'm not gonna use this data point. Instead, I'm gonna take this data point and two on the right side of it, this point and that point, and two on the left side, this point and that point, and I'm gonna average those together, and I'm gonna say that my value at two is that average. Um, the effect of this is to smooth that data out, right? So here's um, this same uh, unaveraged data, time averaged across five sample points. So taking two from the right side of each point, two from the left side of each point, uh, and averaging them with the middle point. Uh, and you can see that it smooths out. And the nice thing about time averaging is it starts to reveal some patterns that you might not have seen in the initial data. So this data looks basically random. It looks pretty flat. But as we time average, we can see that there are some peaks, right? This peak here being a representation of this time at here. You can see up here that there aren't a lot of points down here. And so our most of our points are a little bit higher uh, from around seven seconds to nine seconds. Uh, and so we can see that a little bit. If we time average over more points, so this would be, I'm taking the point at two, seven points to the right and seven points to the left and averaging them and calling that the data point at time equals two. Uh, the more points we time average across, the smoother our curve gets, okay? So here we can start to see, oh yeah, there's a period of uh, lower um, average data, and then there's a period of higher average data. There's still a little peak here, uh, but those peaks start to get washed out the more and more uh, points we add. Now, notice too that we're losing data, right? If I'm averaging across 15 points, the last seven points here, I actually can't use anymore because I don't have seven points to the right of them. And these points over here, I don't have seven points to the left of them. And so we lose, you know, basically half a second of data here and half a second of data there. Uh, and that's one of the costs of time averaging. Okay. But it does help us to see patterns that might um, not be apparent uh, in really complex uh, and stochastic data. So that's one process where we can start to remove some complexity from our signal. The second data processing tool that we use to, um, to remove unwanted information is what's called a filter. Um, and like time averaging, it tends to, uh, it takes out things that, parts of the dynamic signal that aren't gonna be useful to us. And here's a little blue guy commenting on his filter doesn't have one. Um, and so there are two kinds of filters. One's called a low pass filter. Actually, there are, multiple, there are more than this, but these are the most common. A low pass filter and a high pass filter, which, and this is important to remember, is that the, the name tells you what it does, right? So a low pass filter allows low frequencies to pass. A high pass filter allows high frequencies to pass. And you can see the results of that up here. Like if we imagine that our input signal is this complex blue uh, signal, um, for different reasons, we might be interested in different parts of that wave. Um, if we just wanted to know the general pattern, we might use a low pass filter, which would take out these oscillations uh, that sort of work through the entire signal and just give us this nice smooth orange curve. 
Um, if we really didn't care about the big picture changes and we're just interested in that maximum input frequency, um, we might use a high pass filter and we could get this green signal. So this takes out that orange part of this complex signal and just gives us these up and down oscillations. And so depending on your data and what you're trying to do with your data, you might use a low pass or a high pass or a mid pass. You can actually have a filter that just that takes out some high and some low um, to find the to, to get to the heart of information that you're interested in. What about the signal is useful to you? All right, and, and some quick vocabulary about filters. Um, one, the, the cutoff frequency. This is the frequency which divides the frequencies that are allowed to pass from the frequencies that are blocked out by the filter. Um, the pass band, as you might guess, is the frequencies that are allowed to pass. And uh, amazingly, the stop band is the one, uh, is, are the frequencies that are not allowed to pass. And so this is one of those nice cases where we actually name things uh, by what they, what they do. Um, now, uh, real world filters are not gonna be like these ideal filters. That cutoff frequency is not gonna be a steep line like this, uh, but in fact, is gonna be a, a transition, a slope between the pass band and the stop band. Um, so that um, there's not going to be some hard fast line that 79 hertz gets passed and 80 hertz gets cut off uh, but gradually 79 is mostly let through 80 is partly let through 85 is mostly stopped and by the time you get to 90 they're they're uh, fully stopped uh, and so that's that's how filters actually behave uh, in the real world Okay, so we've talked about time averaging and filtering. Both remove information, both tend to smooth our curve out, right, to make our, our data more recognizable and easier to understand. Uh, but we need to be careful with both of them because they both remove that data. We wanna make sure that's not meaningful data that they get rid of. So look at this signal here, right? This is a complex signal. Uh, you can kind of tell it's got two root frequencies, right? One, the big loping frequency here uh, and the second frequency is the up and down oscillations there. Um, this might have two different explanations. This, all of this information might be useful, right? That signal might be telling us um, two different things that are happening in that physical space and we're interested in both of them. Uh, so we might, might want to keep both of those there. The other explanation is that there's some noise here, right? And so noise, I'm using noise uh, loosely here, but when we uh, talk about noise, we're usually talking about some kind of random variation, uh, vibrations, um, some white, uh, like if we're trying to get uh, sound signals, there might be some low level white noise in the, in the environment, uh, some kind of random variation in there. Uh, interference is more often used like in a kind of systematic error um, sense in which there's some extraneous variable that is causing the data to always have the same um, the same noise in it, the same variations in it. And so the most common one of those is when you're using an electronic instrument and the 60 hertz um, AC, the alternating current that's actually giving you the power from your wall socket, uh, shows up in your data. And sometimes that'll happen. Um, and at that point, you obviously want to try and get rid of that. Um, but a filter would do that, right? A filter, we could use a filter to take out 60 hertz as long as our data wasn't around 60 hertz too. So you have to be careful. Make sure you understand where that noise is coming from. Make sure that it's noise uh, before you start to, uh, to pull that information out of your data, or you might lose something valuable.